Okay, uh, this is the last part of this chapter. And one of the very interesting and very powerful statement is whenever we got the greatest common divisor of any two integers like a and b, then that greatest common divisor of a and b can be written by linear combination of that two numbers a and b. Okay. So that's the, okay. of course, in this case, a b must be not zero, but so the, for any given non-zero a b, we can always find the integers x and y and the greatest common device of A and B can be written by in this way, the linear combination of A and B, right? And there are tons of solutions for that actually, but so the reason is like this. Uh, before doing anything, if those two numbers are relative prime, which means there is no common uh, divisor except one and negative one. So one becomes the largest, the greatest common divisor. And then the one, the greatest common divisor of A and B can be written by in that way. So, again, so this is a special case of that, when greatest common divisor of A and B is one, because A and B is a relative prime. So that's the meaning of it. Okay? Now, let's look at this case. Let's First, let's just find what is the greatest common divisor of 1519 and 364? And this is typical kind of procedures, right? So you use this divisor as a divider and remainder as the new divisor. And just keep doing it until we got the zero remainder. Then one over or the last non-zero remainder should be the greatest common divisor of those two numbers. So up to the last part, we, we found out that the greatest common divisor of these two numbers should be 7, like that. But because of this, this 7 can be written by 15, 19 times x plus 364 times y. So we are looking for what this x, y will be. How can you find it? It's kind of backward in this way. When we do this, we're just going down this way. Then let's just come in back. So from this uh, last one, 7 can be written by 49 minus... Uh, right, no, I think it's a typo. So, 3 times 14, right? So, if you subtract this one from both sides, then left hand side becomes 49 minus 3 times 14. Okay? And that is 7. Then from here, 14 is 63 minus 1 times 49, right? So, we can always ch change like this way. Okay? Until 63 is like this, right? Then, when you look at that case like this, look at the, the last line, 7 equals 49 minus 3 times 14. Then instead of 14, we use the equation 1 over. Right? So 63 minus 1 times 49. And by distribution law, we just pulled it over here. So we arrange them. And right now we have 49 and 63, right? So put them together, we found out this. Then this 49 is here, right? So replace this 49 by that right hand side of it and pulled out and rearrange them. Then we got this one. Then lastly, that 63 is written this way. So I have to calculate it. And we arrange them by 15, 19, and 364. We found out those integers. So this must be x and then must be y. So finally, we found the greatest common divisor of these two numbers. And we turn that as a linear combination of those two numbers. So it really takes time, right? Long time and requires a lot of calculation in that way. So 
people, once again, mathematicians are lazy people, so we want to get some simpler way to do that. And they found out there are some patterns, right? Always look uh, using the previous ones and placing and substitu substitution like that. Right? So all together, uh, let me just give you this Excel file. You have another one in this chapter, right? And using that, then it gives you the explanation of it. So let me just use this one to explain it. Okay? Let's just uh, let me use the same kind of number. So when you start it, this is the one, right? So click this one. So we call this is extended Euclidean algorithm. So in the actual Euclidean algorithm, uh, returns the greatest common device of two number only, right? Like that. The extended Euclidean algorithm is actually giving us not only the greatest common divisor, but the linear combination for that. So let's mm -hmm. type in uh, 15, 19, for the Biden, and divisor is 364. Okay, then it just do all this calculation. So we start from here, and sorry about this one, but we write down the remainder first and the quotient later. Okay? In this case, so be careful. And the, for next calculation, bring down that divisor and remainder, right? Divisor, remainder. Keep doing it. When you got zero for the remainder, you have to stop there. And one over, or this one, same number, right? So that should be the greatest common divisor. So the GCD, since it's kind of missing, but GCD of 1519 and 364 is going to be 7. So that's the part of Euclidean algorithm. But in this extended Euclidean algorithm, we want to do some extra work. And then, after we finish it, because of these two given number, when you're just matching side by side, right, respectively, so the left hand side one, matching with A, the divider, and this last column ones matching with the divisor. Then this greatest common divisor, 7, can be written by linear combination of these two numbers, and the corresponding number should be those two. Okay? So it's much faster and simpler okay, than the method we just did for this one. Okay? So look at here, the result is negative 23 and 96. Right? So we got that one. Okay, so the question is how, right? So let me show you. Uh, actually, no matter what question you're dealing with, uh, if you use this kind of file, then just you have to do this main sit first, right? And after you finish it, go to that step by step, then it shows really step by step. So let me use that one to explain it. Because we did this the main set, so it already has these numbers, right? So all you need is just click next step. So when you when you do this one for extended Euclidean algorithm, you have to write down the divide and divisor and remainder first, right? And the quotient in the second column. And at this moment, there is nothing you need to do for these two uh, columns. But we need SNT. It's just to, we give the name, that's all. Or you can say X and Y for this one. It doesn't matter. But placing 1001 right there, right? So these are same line. Okay? Same row. So 1001. Then try to find out those values, remainder and quotient, right? You, you need to really take the division. Okay? Then after you find it, we found that the remainder is not zero. Okay, then we have to go to the next line, right? Then you multiply this quotient with those two values in the same line, zero and one. So this column is the result of Q times S. So right now it should be zero, right? And this column is Q times T. So four times one is four, right? Like that, but for, for doing that, okay, you got that result. It shows it. Then let's go to the next one. But before doing it, 
Do you remember when we do this? We have that one and this region, right? So we need to calculate it. How are we going to do that? This one subtract that and put down the result here. So 1 minus 0 is 1. Same thing for this. This one minus that. That's the matching numbers, right? This is for Q times S. This is Q times T, right? So you just do this way. So 0 minus 4 is negative. Right? That's how you do that. Okay, let's look at the next case. Bring down that divisor and remainder and do that division. Then we have portion 5 and remainder 49. And using this portion, now you see why we want to arrange like this, right? Q must match with this one. So this Q times S, then it's going to be 5. And Q times T is negative 20 like that. Then do the same thing. For this line, we have to use the one over, right? So 0 minus 5, so negative 5 here. And 1 minus negative 20, so we are going to get positive 21. Okay? Then let's go to the next line. So bring down like that. Take the division, 14 and 1. Then 1 times negative 5, 1 times 21, right? And subtracting from here, right? 1 minus negative 5, so it's 6. And negative 4 minus 21, so it's negative 25, right? So going to down and take the division. Then it's 7 and 3, so still it's not 0, so we just keep doing it. So 3 times 6, right? You know, it's pattern, right? And subtracting it one by one like that. And finally, at here, when you take the division, we found the remainder zero. Then you have to stop at this moment, right? You don't need to calculate more. This portion is for the next line, right? But we don't need it. Then we know seven is the greatest common divisor of that two numbers. And it can be written by the linear combination of these two numbers with that two numbers respectively, okay? So this yellow one goes to yellow, and the pink one goes to pink. Right? Okay. So once again, this is just for checking purpose, right? You have to do uh, by yourself using pencil and paper. Okay? You know the, the, the longest distance in the universe? Do you know what that is? It's just the, the distance between your brain and your hands. Okay? You, you, you know, right? But Kind of your hands doesn't follow your command, right? That's the problem. So you need to practice a lot. So in the next ones, it, it really takes long, right? So I'm not going to do that, but please do. So using whenever it asking, even just what is the greatest common divisor, still that extent extended great uh, Euclidean algorithm is working is nicely, right? But most likely. Um, people really want to know what the linear combination of that, right, for that great common division, then definitely you have to use that extended Euclidean algorithm, right? So please show me your work, right, here. And if you finish it, you can check the Excel file, right, whether you got the right answer or not, okay? Do not copy from the Excel, okay? So in this case, if for is linear combination of like this. What can you say about it? Yeah, it's so simple. You can just tweet like these are the two integers is given, and four is what? Greatest common divisor of these two, right? And at the time that x and y is, it looks like this way, right? So that's the end of chapter 13.